Good morals, my friends! My name is Ankuna. Welcome back to Cupid. Um, I just realized that's not a choice. We either open it or leave it alone. If I remember correctly, last time we saw why Catherine committed suicide, and that was because she killed her sister accidentally. So I guess the guilt ate up to her, and then she decided to off herself. Never a good sign. But now we have something here. So we saved here. I think it was something that Catherine left us. We can either open it or leave it alone. Um, let's open it because I want to see what Catherine left. Oh, a locket. Open that locket. I'd like to see what is inside. An object that he owns will make any attack with more powerful. Rosa fussed with the pendant for a while, but like you even said, it was stuck. I'll try it again later, Mother. I'm rather curious about it myself. The spell was not as affecting stages, gradually uncovering its true face. Fondness first, then trust. Familiarity. Rosa sighed. But was the spell necessary at all? Didn't she already have that with Gilliman? Rosa bit her lip, remembering the warmth of his hand. They had known each other for a long time. It was rather comforting to have someone to mourn with. And now that the competition is out the way, she can now have him all to herself. However, Rosa did find it strange that Gillen may rarely even mention Catherine anymore. It was as if he was shedding her off like skin. Again, the taste of blood in her mouth and her throat surfaced. The memory of the needles made her stomach lurch. Oh, yeah, I forgot, she had needles in her throat. Ugh! Since her friend had died, the Marquis had begun spending all his hours locked in his office. He barely showed himself socially, rarely even attended meals. Hmm. But they were casting a powerful spell, something that might harm Gilliam. What if he was, after all, innocent? Well, considering that he was mourning, he probably... To his credit, he's probably mourning in his own way, you know, not really mentioning her because if he were mention her, he were to mention her, it would probably bring so much sadness to him. So I guess in a way, he's kind of like avoiding everything, which is bad, but you know, to each their own. She had good years and memories, and years of good memories with him. What was she even expecting to find out? Exactly how could she live with the guilt of two dead friends? Rosa sighed. She cared for him. Despite all the suspicions, she knew that much. But Mother was adamant. Three candles for three lamps. A fitting curse for a man who frolics in love's domain. Storage. The love for familiars. Philia. The love for friends. And Eros. The love for lust. Open his heart with storage. Unmask him with Vinia. Strike him down with Eros. Yet Rosa kept the fourth candle, one she had named again. Unconditional love. She didn't know whether she would ever use it. Mother, of course, would object. But just in case Eros successfully struck Gilliman, she wished to light again. At least give him peace before. Rosa walked towards Gilliman. A pang of anxiousness biting her. Arise, my daughter. The work lays ahead. To bring him down, we must find his weakness. Then we attack. Revenge will be sweet, my dear daughter. Do it for mother. Chapter 4 Metamorphosis. Okay, we're on the fourth chapter already. Okay, now we're laying the candles. The second candle is lit. Its name is Philia. The love for friends. The yellow candles shone and danced with a breath. So poetic is the dialogue. Let this candle burn until his wick is spent. Encourage friendship. Bring forth memories. Let me walk in his hand halls without any suspicion. Let me rummage through his belongings invisibly. His journal. 
He guards his journal fiercely. I must find it. Rosa adjusted her coat and she sat in one of the reserved seats. The theater was packed. As much as I could see, the air buzzed with excitement. She hadn't realized this many people would come tonight. Oh, Mother, I wish they would stop staring at me. And why not? This was NBM, Captain Verizon's first solo concert. Okay, so we're back in a flashback where Catherine's alive. Okay. Her name had been solely gathering recognition to the past few years. It was feasible to expect the full house. Still, the turnout was more than they had expected. Paris had taken Rose and Catherine by surprise. The sheer number of people in their aliveness were about were well above the usual size of their small town. Catherine was obviously thrilled with the opportunity to play in such a esteemed debut for her debut. Rosa tried her best to keep her anxiety under control. This was for Catherine. Yes. For Catherine. This was her night. Rosa took a deep breath and released it slowly. It relaxed her. I hope the show starts soon. Rosa's eye drifted toward the stage and then to the throng of people gathering on her far left. You know, I keep forgetting that she has only one eye. In the middle of the hollow stood a familiar shape of a man. He held his back to her, but the posture in the build were unmistakable. That's his killer man. The heart made a sudden gleeful jump. She was delighted that he had made it to Catherine's show. He had been traveling extensively recently. I wonder if Amelia Emilia is still alive around, uh, around here. Probably. It's probably before everything went downhill. What if she walked over and made sure? Gilman would greet her kindly. She was sure Catherine would be thrilled to know he was here. Rosa pondered for a bit, reminded of a sudden wince of pain. Soon the master of ceremonies obliged people to take their seats. Gilman turned around and walked towards her. He stopped midway and took a seat without noticing her presence. Rosa seemed deep in thought. What's wrong, sweetheart? Is something bothering you? I like doing the mother's voice. It's like she's so manipulative. Well, technically she is, but I like doing manipulative voices. Nothing, mother. Don't lie to me, you ungrateful child. I just didn't expect to see him here, that's all. Oh. Let's see. It is the same problem, isn't it? Oh. Another save point. Okay, so which choice should I do? Does Gilder and Friend bother you or worry about Catholic Uh Uh Let's see. Hmm. Which one is she more worried about, to be honest? Is it Gilmer's presence or the fact that Catherine made well, we don't know what I actually don't know what when this is. Is it before or after Amelia's death? Um Well, she did see him and then the minute she thought about Catherine and how she would react, she got quiet. So I'm guessing it's Catherine. Filthy man again. I'm sure Catherine will be pleased. Whatever will she think now that her lover is back? I bet she will rather spend all her time with him. As usual. My poor darling. Always running after her star. I wonder how long until she is tired of you constantly tagging along. You brag to me that you share everything like sisters. Does that include Gilliman too? Oh. <laughs> you are making your life so complicated, darling. Why do you even bother yourself with these people? Oh, another shade boy. Publisher. Okay. Uh. 
well, I don't know if she abandoned her. I think it's more of the fact that Gilmer never looked at her because after the deaths, he kind of just shut himself up. So I guess the first one. Do you like being so miserable? It saddens me to see you like this. He has eyes only for Catherine. Young, sweet, innocent Catherine. Must you always impose your presence like a little dog? It's not like that, Mother. We're friends. Friends? Friends? Darling, friendship is nothing but a shallow kind of relationship. People change friends as easily as the weather. You don't even remember the friends you made at a certain age. Another choice. God, mother is so, so whimsical. Oh man, which one? Family is more important, or friendship does last? Then again, she never. Really, so friendship is more important. Um, no. Friend, family is more important, but then again, the only family we know is her mother. Friendships do not last. That kind of goes more with what's going on right now. What I know. Okay, so let's go with that one. Listen to mother. Friendships do not last. You always love so much. You give all of yourself. I just don't want you to get hurt. Trust me, I'm your mother. They are not worth the love you give them. My dear, every relationship is centered around need. They need you now, but soon they will abandon you too. Rose's tongue felt bitter in her mouth. She was filled with annoyance for her mother. Wasn't happiness as fleeting as friendship? Yet it was not any less real than sadness. These friends, these were people who accepted her. They shared laughter and tears, their own regrets and dreams. What more was needed? Rosa's confused feelings began to erase itself reality neatly in her mind. Getting Mary Catherine's happiness was important to her. This was the main thing. She knew they felt the same way for her. Her insecurities were real, but they were insignificant. If anything, they were bittersweet. She had no regrets. For the first time in her life, she wanted to talk back to Mother. She bit her lip. Quilling the nerves as she opened her mouth to speak. I, I know that. What? I know that Kevin matters more to him than I do. I know they might abandon me one day for whatever reason. It might even be today or, or even next year. Or even sooner. But that doesn't matter in the long run. I am happy with them. We had years together that I will treasure. Like I trust the memories of you too, mother. My memories of you keep me sustained. That is why I love you. The years we spent together, no matter how fleeting, are still worth something. So let me care for them right now. Everything changes, but nothing is lost. Rosa was sure she had read this somewhere. Rosa waited for mother to answer with a vicious voice to burn out screaming at her cheekiness. But no voice came. Rosa smiled to herself. The lights dimmed. A low hush descended on the pews. So we talk back to Mother. Soon Catherine entered, clad in the loveliest gown and an even lovelier smile. Oh, Catherine, I can't wait to see you perform so excellently. She was beautiful. She belonged on the stage. The light shone on her but they paled in comparison to her radiance. Catherine bowed to the audience and took a seat in front of the piano. She began to play. Rosa gripped the handle of her seat. She felt surges of emotion with every day. And a kind of energy passed through her, touching her skin and making her break into goosebumps. Oh, Catherine, 
Though they had noticed such an effect before this moment. Music that could struck the so struck the heart as it was filling with the soul. It was different from practice, different from whatever she was playing before performing in front of smaller groups. This was a stage, and here was a woman with strings. She was tapping the right keys, touching your heart and electrifying your soul. Rosa realized she wasn't alone in this feeling. The whole room was mesmerized. She looked at the lady beside her seat. She had her hand in her open, to her open mouth. A teardrop dangled precautiously on her eye, curiously on her eye. The man to her left seemed to have forgotten to blink. Rosa being that savored a rush of kinship. They were experiencing the same emotions with her. It made her love her just a little bit. Rosa closed her eyes and saved her the night. And we talk back to Mother. Take that, you disembodied voice! A bead of sweat fell from Catherine's chin. She was out of her body now. Her stress from the beginning of the show had thawed and turned to passion. It ran down her fingers to the keys. It did not escape Captain's notice that most of the crowd because of the show gawk at her. Captain Pride. The one that the infamous Marquis de Gould had been quoting for years. Didn't he pay for this event? <laughs> Lucky poor Captain. Captain Pride. I heard she was on the pianist. Any good? Yes. Who knows? Must be. I mean, we're hearing it right now, and it's so beautiful. Is it? Is it? Even that Marquis is chasing her. Catherine Pride. Some female pianist. Pretty face. Nice flesh on her. Let us watch the show. Her fingers caress the keys, playing them with the force of her heart. Did she play to prove them wrong? The music saturated the theater with her feble. No. Not to prove them wrong only. No. To set it right. Catherine Perron is my name. I am more than just a pretty face. And I am playing this piece. It is my gift. Let me touch your soul. <laughs> Rosa felt her eye get moist. This was Catherine's heart transcribed into music. All energy and beauty with the soul strength of the wind. <laughs> the missions of a sudden gale and whips and lily scares and tights gentlemen's hats. The tips. Ladies. This cold breeze that carried the loneliness of the coming winter. Everyone in the audience felt it. Rosa searched for Gillen was facing the darkness. She couldn't see him clearly. But it didn't matter. She knew what he was feeling. She felt it too. Rosa's heart began to ache. It was a strain she didn't know how to make. Rosa hmm. After the show, Rosa greeted Catherine in the back straight dressing room. Oh wow, Rosa looks much, much older. That or she's still around the same age, just that the artwork kind of makes her older. She was smothering a flower from the audience. Oh, excuse me. Sweat glistened on her forehead. Catherine gave her a tight hug. Congratulations, Kath. You are marvelous on stage. Thank you, Rosie. Catherine covered her cheeks with her hands. Oh, I'm still shaking. The excitement from the stage hadn't left. I mean, look at my hands. <laughs> oh, dear. So I will call this a show, this show a success, yes? Pour the champagne, shall you? It's a, it's a night to remember. Okay, so she is older. Catherine and Rosa hugged again. Let me just finish up here, Rosa. Then we'll celebrate properly. Two young, ravishing ladies sampling the best of what Paris has to offer. I like it! Rosa laughed. Just don't let go of my hand. You might get lost being so starry eyed. She was teasing but smiling brightly all the same. I would never! Anyway, shall I meet you outside in a few minutes? Very well. I'll see you later. Rosa was thankful to leave the backstage area. She had almost forgotten her anxiety during the show.
but the backstage was an ill-reminded of the crowd. She looked forward to the night ahead, wondering vaguely why she had mentioned giving her presence to Cap. She shrugged it off. Yeah, that's simply slip of mind, that was all. Hmm. Slip of the mind. It happens to the best of us. Catherine went back to her dressing room, humming, as she was about to grab her coat. She wasn't the least bit tired. Visions of city, exploring new sites, and getting experiences made her giddy with excitement. It would end the night on the best note, she was sure. A small knock interrupted her thoughts. Who's there? Catherine turned around and she cheerful smile froze her face froze on her face. The mall key peeked from the open door set to the side. Hello, Catherine. Oh. Oh boy. A tingling pass to Catherine's neck. Although she was aware he had returned. This was the first time she'd seen him in two years. After she rebuked his intentions of wooing her. So he did go after her! Huh! Tather shook her head at the memory. They grew up together. It was normal to develop feelings with someone you shared most of your life with, was it not? Ooh, never mind. Yet Catherine had promised herself not to dabble with, with the Marquis. With all the rumors and the past blings, it felt like she knew too much. Too complicated, she had said. The rumors were still alive in some circles. But hadn't Gilmer come clean with his romantic escapes? Hadn't he vowed to be faithful since he had made his intentions clear? <gasps> Maybe. Who to believe? Perhaps it was possible that. Catherine pushed away the intuition of that last thought and rearranged her face into a merry smile. She curtsied. My lord, Marquis, thank you for coming. The last bit came out loud in her ears. It felt like her voice was compensating. She suppressed a groan. I hope you find the show satisfactory. My lord, Marquis, what happened to Giddy Monster? At once, the memories flooded her mind. The use, that used to be a greeting every time she had visited him back then. She was screaming that when she saw him. Right before she flung her arms around his neck. Catherine didn't know what to do. Some near her hands. The hands that had never betrayed her felt like they belonged to someone else. She cleared her throat and felt a smile harden on her face. Part of my past sight, sire. I was a bit of a precautious child. After all, I must give my due respects to the sponsor of this event. I thank you, by the way. It didn't have to be so extravagant. Wasn't it your dream to play in Paris, Ken? I thought your debut would be the perfect opportunity to fulfill that dream. The Marquis stepped into the quarters and closed the door. Oh, boy! Also, what happens to the mother? I want to speak with the mother again. I want to talk in her voice. Damn it. Oh well. Catherine flinched, afraid that the small room would draw them even closer. <sighs> Just the bit that you wanted, probably. What a sly fox. She floundered for a bit and contented herself in diffusing with fussing with the flowers on the table. She should chase them out. Why hasn't she chased them out? Why was she chasing them out? <sighs> Auntie Catherine. I didn't think you'd be attending tonight, sire. Weren't you traveling? Yes, I was. But I wouldn't miss your concert for the whole of France. Get him a step forward. And it seems my events were well placed. Get him a drew closer to Catherine, so near that she could smell the mint in his breath. Oh, 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 uh, get him here. Please, uh, back away, man. I understand. Give, give her some space, please. Some space, please. He appeared to reach out to her face, but changed direction at the last minute. Okay, okay, we are going to uncomfortable territory. <coughs> extra, extra, please stay away from the girl. Oh, these flowers are from the Duke. 
How pretty. He examined a card dangling a hair away from Catherine's ear, trying to look fascinated by the piece of decorative paper. Hey, buddy, I know what you're doing. Keep your hands to yourself and step away from the girl. Again. Then he stepped back, grinning like an idiot. Good. I don't want him to put a restraining order against your dumb ass. Uh, he really has great taste. Whatever did you learn that muckhead? If he thought that kind of ploy would make her swoon, then he was dead wrong. In fact, all it made her want to do was wipe that stupid grin off his face. With the back side of the base. Yes, he does. Doesn't he? She gritted her teeth, unable to take the accented edge off her voice. It wouldn't be so hard. All she had to do was grab the neck of the expensive vase and fling it as its head. She wasn't sure if the vase would break. Hmm, maybe not. Maybe she would need to hit him again for the full effect. Catherine, did you hear what I just said? Huh? I said, now that I'm back in town, would you consider playing for me again? It was part of our original arrangement, after all. She felt the tendons on her neck tighten. I have a full schedule this week, sire, but I'll let you know what I'm afraid. Ooh. Oh. Sire, I must retire for the night. I am exhausted from my performance. At all, excuse me. Ah, crap, with the mother's voice. Okay, that doesn't matter. Catherine turned around to look for her coat, but she felt Gilbert grab her hand. Hey! 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 Hey, 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 Nit, no, dummy, cease and desist your hands off the girl. I told you so many times. Keep your hands to your goddamn self, Gilliman. Jeez. I don't want to file charges against you. Wait, um. They stared at each other for a couple of seconds. Gilmer looked like he was about to say something. I hope to God they don't make out. His mouth, his mouth opened and closed as if debating the correct words in his head. But he just dropped Catherine's hand a moment later. Ooh. Ooh. <clears throat> I'm sorry. You're right. You must be tired. His shoulders dropped. Catherine felt a tinge of disappointment, but she ignored it quickly. Oh, Catherine, 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 no! You're supposed to stay away from him! God, where's Rosa and her mother when you need them? I need to get back to them. Get back to revenge on get, get back to go, get back to getting revenge on Gilliman, please. Gilliman let out a sigh. You know I'm not good at this, Catherine. Oh, what do I know? You seem to do just fine. You have an amazing track record. <laughs> Catherine folded her arms over her chest with a pout. <laughs> oh. With that. That is just because of my face. What? Most people think I am very deep and thoughtful when I stare at them like this. Hmm. I just went with it. Catherine bit her lip to prevent a chuckle from his cake. But the laugh that burst out from her. <laughs> nope. I assume so. Before she could stop herself, a mischievous smile appeared on her lips. <laughs> oh no. Uh, actually, it is your inability to make big gestures, Gilly. Uh -huh. Well, Look at you! She covered she cupped this thigh tight she covered this thigh a little pose. You stand stiff as a board. I guess it fools people to believe you are a graceful dashing soul. Give me a minute pout. Surprisingly. But I am dashing though. Have you seen me? Look at my posture. I'm a dashing young fellow. Cool. Maybe. Un contraire, monsieur. I did have the misfortune of being victim to your dancing. 
Must you always bring that up? It was a long time ago. He looked so distressed that Catherine couldn't help but tease him further. I know the death of a little tell, sir. I like that tell. I want my toe back. Can you please deliver my toe back, please? Deliver the toe. My toe misses his friends. It misses the friends of it. Misses it. It was a traumatic experience. It was a traumatic experience. Look, see, everyone, look, my toes, my toes. See, my toes are begging. Before long, they were laughing. Like it was the most natural thing in the world. When did it change? Had it always been like this? Captain settled back into her own skin, mulling the confusion in her veins. God. She looked up at him, her own emotions stung her. You can't keep running away from me. I can have you whenever I want. <laughs> she sighed deeply. Her hands tightened around her resolve, for lack of a solid thing to hold on. Perhaps not. But I've already given you an answer. I am aware. I have tried to accept it. Please don't take offense, but I thought it would be easy. I have to clear my head, to fill my mind with other things. Troubling usually does the trick. For a while, at least. I thought I was successful. Not a lot of music playing right now. Hmm. Even during my trip, I will catch you myself thinking such absurd things like... I wonder what Kath will say when she sees that. I don't think Kath will like this too much. Like Kath used to say. It was funny. But also a little infuriating to know that you had never left my mind. So I wish I knew how to do this. I am. Um, he sighed. I am so used to people leaving me that I didn't know how to quit on my own. Hmm. It must bother you, the amount of lovers I had in the past. I am sorry for that. I almost wish I really was that adept. Like I have told you, most were simply rumors. Hmm. The rest were people were realizing I am not as interesting as they had initially thought. Wait, so are you two getting back together? Okay. I thought that my sound kind of went out again. Making sure, sorry. Kill me. They never stayed more on cat. One can say I am amazing with first impressions. There's a nagging feeling that's that's all I'm ever good for. A sort of exotic trophy people like to collect for its sake, and they put it aside when its novelty expires. I can't blame them. Right now, I'm quite sure that I am what is wrong. It must be better at letting people go. But you. You. Please don't make me let go. You see through me, Kat. In your eyes, I feel like I am somebody worth having. Or loving. Having and loving. It is, is it any wonder I'd like to continue thinking of you fondly? Oh, it happens that hard, I suppose. Catherine bit her lip. There's our impressive word, sire, but do you have a point? My point? It's simple, really. I... I don't think I'll be able to stop my feelings for you. Okay, there's some music. I thought I was... I guess my headphones are down. Hmm. You may reject me as many times as you wish. It will not change. I've already come to the conclusion that I don't mind. He shrugged. So, I propose that you either get used to me chasing you, or you give in to my dashing, toe-mashing charms. You know, I think she still wants her toe back. I don't think she'll forgive me unless you can give her toe back. Please give her her toe back. I'm pretty sure she misses it. 
Catherine chuckled and despite herself. Or I can just kill you with the Duke's fashionable face. Please do not give my superiors a pleasure. Oh, no, but I would. Here's the face. Whoosh. I would rather you rip my heart out of my chest and offer it as a dark sacrifice to the gods. Okay, no problem. Alright, here we go. Winner, fatality. Damn, it's good OJ. Kari! Very poetic. Bashing points for you, sir. Bashing points! You think so? I've been reading a lot of romance novels this week. What kind of romance novels are you even talking about? I think I must need to be more suave to be the baby of my dreams. Is this war game? Catherine laughed. <laughs> Hardly. I believe this is how they do it in the big finale. Uh oh. Whoa, 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 what's going on here? Gilmer cleared his throat and knelt down on one knee. Oh god, is he going to? Are you going to, Gilmer? He took Catherine's hand awkwardly, trying to act as natural as he could. His serious makes me Catherine burst out of laughter. Gratefully! Gratefully! What in the world are you doing, idiot? Stop laughing, madam. I must try this at least once. I'm simply concerned for an older gentleman and his knee. Will you be able to stand up in that position later, given your obvious grace? Get him here, chuckle. Terrible! Don't dare you call me an old man! I don't look my age, you know. <laughs> sure. Oh, stop laughing, will you? I'm trying to concentrate. Hush now, let me concentrate. He cleared the story again. Will the Mademoiselle Catherine Parade allow me an audience tonight? As such, perhaps she might allow me to stay by her side for a while longer. It will make me a very happy man. Wait a minute, is she ha does she, wait a minute, she has plans with um Rosa. It was sappy and ridiculous, and yet hearing the words did stir Catherine's heart. They were giggling like fools now, like children, heart heavy with love for him. Love? Did she just think love? Oh god, they are getting back together, aren't they? Of course she did. She had always loved him. Why was she fighting her feelings again? I don't know why she broke why she rejected him in the first place. This is confusing! The reason seemed unclear all of a sudden. Alright, sire. Your gallantry has convinced this lady to accept your offer for tonight. She bowed her head with an exaggerated curtsy. Gilmer took her hand theatrically as he stood up. This gentleman is with ease he didn't have to see. A few rules for tonight. As we are in Paris, you must be on your best behavior. No embarrassing jokes like making friends with the street mimes. Agreed. As such, I must retire by 8. 10. 8. 9.30. 9. Take it or leave it. Get away to come. But Catherine just chuckled at his frustration. <sighs> Fine. I'm 15 minutes. Shy, I meant 9 sharp. Get his face brightened like a little boy's. Oh, I know we can go. There's a quick little please ah, just south of here. They have a breathtaking view of the city. They're on a hill, you see. Wait, wait, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, wait, wait, whoa, wait a minute. I, hold on, hold on. I gotta continue to see where this is going. I know the owner personally, so we're already guaranteed the best seats. And they serve the best pomme de terre gratis. Yeah. Gratin <sighs> again. If you continue eating that every opportunity you get, soon there will be no potatoes left in all of France. Catherine sighed. <sighs> Why must it be so? This better not be a game like all your other flicks, sire. I deserve to be treated like more than a prize. But Catherine watched the gentleman's face beat as he talked about the little house on the hill. How was how when the weather was perfect, the stars were soaked as God. She giggled to herself with fondness. 
an adult. And not in Paris, the people would rather eat cheese with potatoes. It was just like him to pick the stars and save the city, wasn't it? It pleased her to know that she adored the side of him that others did not see. But was this the real him? Did she really see through him like he said? Or was this the face he put on for her sake like most of us could? If it was, then she had been watching this face since she was a little girl. From all to admiration, from friends to lovers. They had seen the best and the worst of each other throughout the years. Surely there was something to that. Surely it can all be a lie. Right? I'm sorry. I got carried away. Shall we go? Yes. Catherine grabbed her coat and gave him and took her purse. Oh, I almost forgot. Rosa is waiting outside. Oh, finally you remember Rosa. I was about to say, are you, are you gonna, are you gonna pretty much confirm Mother's fear is that yes, you two will abandon her just to go screw with each other? Cause that was my big question. Then let us hurry up and meet, her, meet up with her. I haven't seen her for a long time. I missed her too. It'll be a treat to spend the evening with two esteemed ladies. She'll be thrilled to see you. <laughs> Just like old times, that's three. Yes. She slipped a hand in his arm nonchalantly and caught Gilmer's mouth to himself. At the very least, let the smile be real. Oh! Whoa, whoa, whoa. That was a, um... That was a very quick, um... Transition. It went from a uh, happy-go-lucky moment to suddenly glass breaking and Catherine yelling at Gilmer saying he's lying. Wow. What a change. And a very, very high one at that. Whoa. Well. Huh. I actually maybe jump too. Holy shit. <laughs> Whew. Anyway. You're lying. Lady Claude, I saw you in Nimes. Oh. Oh. Guillaume. Don't tell me. She has a snot right down her face. She is holding a vintage 1610 bottle of wine. Ooh. 1610. Vintage. Sweet. She gripped the neck of the bottle flung at the wall with Guillaume was standing. Oh. Boy. Oh, ow. He ducked in time just in time to avoid the glass. Whoa, what's going on here? Sherry! Don't you sherry me, you bastard! Uh, can we not take it out of my wine collection again? Again? You mean she's done it before? Catherine took another bottom response. Glass breaking? Yep. Stop, Karen. You're Catherine. You're going to hurt yourself. I hurt myself. Why do you care? You tell me you're all to uh, be John last weekend. Wait, actually in Nimes? Why are you making this into a huge deal? So I had to stop over in neighboring town. It was no, it's a lie if you omit things. I told you at the very start of this relationship, Gilliman. I want 100% honesty from you. And I've told you as well. I have a reputation. You must follow me. Idle mouths can't help but chatter. Do you know this lady Claudette once indecently proposed to me? And right in her husband hug on right on in her husband's birthday's gathering as well? So what? That is all besides the point. You know what they say. When there is smoke, there is fire. How about the name the further towards the bush? La Lane de Monteclair? La Lane the shop girl of the town. A nice girl. Well, these eyes so mice with all those three times they made the mistake to enter her shop, it looks like. Is there anything else you would like to insinuate? <laughs> Nothing at all, sire. Why? Is there anything I should know? Get on my side and try to speak calmly. Shelly, I promise you when we got engaged, didn't I? I will be faithful to only you. You know, now that I think about it, now Catherine looks much, much older and much right her, much like her age. Gilmer still looks the same. 
there is no one else but Catherine Greater her teeth. Again with this. You are more vague than a monkey spit. I spit on that. <laughs> Answer me straight right now. Yes or no. Are you having an affair? Gidmer threw his hands up in annoyance. My dear Catherine, I am not. I already answered this. Why does it seem like you only hear what you want to hear? I just want to understand everything and make it crystal clear. Is that so bad? Now explain to me what Lady Charlotte, Lady Charlotte, you are taking that bitter conniving for words over mine. <laughs> well, I try to get information from the source, but the source isn't very reliable. Give him a shoulder something to an irritating surrender. She heard him curse under his breath. <sighs> I am tired of this cat. This is a waste of time. What is the point of this if we keep going around in circles? Catherine snuffed, wiping her nose savagely with her hand. You always do this. You go off on a tangent and pick things apart. You don't even listen to my side at all. Can you stop acting like a child for one minute? Maybe then we can have a real conversation. A conversation with a lie that is always one sided. Catherine grabbed two bottles at this time. Oh, crap. But what happened? She brought the two bottles crashing in front of her. With the pieces of gas down her face. In her eyes, maybe? What a random thought. The morbid picture gave her an out of body experience. And where's Rosa in, and where's Rosa in all this? It was a nasty fight. Depressingly familiar. But they were dancing to the same tune once again. Here should be the lover. And to left, the hot head. Watch her dance with anger blazing. Tears are sparkling, bitter rage. The fight goes on until she is spent. The breeze is hazy in her head. Pan right, the rink. Both the victim and the accused. Words are poison or a unit's fuse. Migraines taunt his pride and temper. He gradually takes on the magic mantle. The words they throw reach fever pitch. The dance is full crust. He'll choose to leave. Enough of this, he says in rage. Temper rising, he acts frail. Her husband fever burning hot. She cries it off, that cowardly sod. What does she expect, she asks herself. He'll take a piece with a bowed head, bowed head. The least he can do, her anger shouted. A hint of guilt, a hint of death. The migraine thumbs as he is pacing. Annoyed and anger, his face a flush. Capricious woman, irrational. He shakes his head with a tired breath. Yet he basks in torture and savors the taste. This is love, he nods. This is love, he says. Love and pain go hand in hand. It is painful, yes, but never bland. He nips a morsel and takes a bite. Exquisite, he chuckles. A rush, a charge. His heart, he feels his heart is struck by love. Decides that it is worth the grip. A dainty flower he must protect. To watch it bloom until it's ripe. But not right now, he says so so. His prize too hard to swallow hope. Hours pass, he will call. She forms the world she knows will hurt. She plans to cut and make him bleed. Yet when he arrives, she's all one but weeps. Why'd you leave? I should have. Are you angry still? I'm here now, love. Her arms are stuck upon his neck. He'll promise to change to do his best. For both their sakes, he admits he's wrong. A little lie to complete the song. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you. you're tired of me or when you find some other pretty thing, you bastard. Catherine says back into her brain just as the last sentence left her lips. If you're going to leave me, then just leave. Stop playing me for a fool. This was a new tempo. She dropped the bottle to her side but did not let go. He noticed she changed the song and time to stop the pony. I never once thought of treating you like a fool. I love you. 
I'm never going to leave you. New tears churned and bubbled from her eyes. Oh, yeah. It was her turn to leave. This time. And she did. She was left to perform a solo. Contemplation. Regret. Penance. A vow of new beginnings forming in his head. Oh boy. Cat? Rosie, Rosie. Oh, hey. Now there's Catherine. Uh, were you listening to all that? Um, I, 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 I'm sorry. Catherine stumbled into Rosa's room that evening. Drunk to high heaven. Oh, oh, Catherine was drinking. That's so good. Her half lidded eyes surveyed Rosa's meager space. She let herself fall, lay on a bed, fall, fall, fall on the bed. But getting it instantly. The ceiling spurned in the walls of throbbing headaches and an acid laced throat. Bad idea. <laughs> Catherine stood up and with her leg, wobbly legs tripped her. Rosa Carter had sat Catherine in a small bed. Oh my goodness, you stink of alcohol. She propped some pillows behind her back and fixed the straight hairs that had lingered in her face. Well, literally. Ah, face, huh? You're my favorite. <laughs> How much have you drink, Kath? Catherine counted on her fingers. Never mind. Would you like some water? <laughs> no. Interesting. Huh? I can only see the liquid sloshing around in my brain when I shake my head. What was pursed her lips? Catherine was in no shape to make decisions right now. She was to get her something to sober up. But Catherine grabbed Rose's hand and tucked it at it gently. Oh no. <laughs> you. You. Um, please? Rosa complied. Catherine revealed a bottle about three quarters full. Wait, so you tell me she took those bottles and drunk? It's like a wonderful from the Gilly Monster's closet. <laughs> Since I'm ever calling me a child. Rosa began to protest. Catherine paid her no mind. Come on, Rosa! Have you ever drunk ourselves to the point of insanity? Yeah, hard, you're not a friend. Catherine took a huge look at the bittersweet licking off face of Rosa. Rosa examined it carefully and took a mouthful. She gargled it in her mouth, admiring the sweet and sour flavor of the woman. I've never had anything this rich before. Good, <laughs> right? It has to be. It's the last bottle. So, had another fight with Gillett. Shh, shh, shh. <laughs> had to win the finals that name. First rule of drunk Catherine. We did not speak. A name. The finals for bad win. No, 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 no. I am not talking about that. Egocentric puppet tonight. We are going to drink. We are going to reminisce. And tomorrow, we'll hate ourselves together. Agreed. Rosa giggled. <laughs> if you say so. Okay, drunk, drunk Catherine is fun. And, oh. Alright, alright, alright. That's what. Rosa puffed her cheeks and mocked disgust. Oh, Fine. How do you make holy water? How? Boil the hell out of it. <laughs> uh, that was a that was a good one. Both of Catherine were assaulted by a kiss of mystery collect. Catherine felt the muscles of her cheeks ache. <laughs> That is so bad. I don't even have the words. Catherine wiped the tears of laughter from her eyes. I heard it from one of your suitors, Sir Adrian. Rosa rolled her eyes. How come I always end up talking to your suitors more than you? How much they're trying to do a fee? I'll pay it with my gratitude. What's wrong with Sir Adrian anyway? 
You seem like a nice man. Nice hair, nice teeth, nice pruned mutton chops. The woman laughed. How about Sir Ferrand? He sent you that lovely bouquet of flowers. Uh, I'm not interested in a relationship at the moment. At the moment? You don't seem interested ever. I, I am. Sometimes. It's just so hard to connect to people from maybe on physical. Relationships seem out of the question. Should I have any difficulty with me or that idiot in the upper room? What's his name? Uh, Fort Face. It means you're not incapable. <sighs> that is only because you are my closest friends. But there must be someone! Oh, you are so picky! If you go on like that, you might end up like an old maid. <laughs> so be it. The only person I like is right now fucking you. What? Nothing. I'd rather take care of your children anyway. I shall be the amazing godmother. By the way, the person that I want, you're fucking him. Catherine smiled wistfully. I'm not sure I want any. What? Children. I love children, but it's a little scary. Catherine bit her lip. When she becomes her own mother, it was such a terrifying possibility, wasn't it? She barely remembered her mother. Her man lady had struck her as soon as Catherine was born. She had never called Catherine by her name, not even on the day she had died. All she knew was that her family struggled with that crisis. Her father, exhausted and depressed, and her sister forced to grow up too fast. To be a blight to the people you love. How horrible would that be? Catherine. Rosa smiled at her, interrupting her thoughts. You will be a good mother. Your past does not matter. Catherine stared at Rosa, almost a chance at her ability to know what she was thinking. She really was her best friend, wasn't she? The thoughts warmed her heart. You really think so? Yes. The fact that you are so concerned about them before they are even born speaks much of your kindness. Whatever happens, those children will grow up loved. Catherine blushed and changed the subject. We are out of booze. We finished it. I'm quite buzzed. Hey, remember the first time we drank? Do you mean the party or the potato incident? Oh, of course I meant the potato incident. Oh, how can I forget? Rosa burst out laughing. Oh, all right, all right. That was hilarious. But stop laughing. I almost went to jail. Goodness, I'm so stupid. Rosa laughed again. Hey, men. Hey, guess the one to say? No, Catherine, we do dumb things when we're young. Catherine, we do dumb things when we're young. <laughs> it's about time you learn your lesson. I can't wait to tell your children endless tales of your shenanigans. French? Tut, tut. Catherine grabbed Rosa's waist and said to the tip of her, but Rosa slipped away laughing. Catherine's stomach lurched as she stopped, her hands still hugging Rosa's waist. The room spun but it wasn't unpleasant. She felt like being gently rocked to a cradle. She closed her eyes and smiled. She took in Rosa's scent, always smelling slightly like apples. Um... Rosa scratched her head and smoothed her hair. This is nice. Yes. Rosa? Hmm? Thank you for being with me. Of course. No, I mean... She sat up on the bed. You've been with me all my life. You are my oldest friend. When we first met, I didn't have many friends. I just studied my piano lessons night and day because that's all I ever knew how to do. It was all I had. Maybe that's why I begged Papa to let you stay with us. I was so happy. Rose a smile fondly at the memory. You were there for me always. Ah, that sounds disgustingly melodramatic. You yeah, got drunk, I understand. They laughed again. Would you like to hear something worse? What? You changed my life. Ah, that is worse. 
Rose is my father. She played with Catherine's hair. I'm the lucky one, Catherine. You took me home and treated me like I was family. I want to know what a real family was like without you. Papa Francois and Emile. Even if Papa Francois always did avoid me, I knew he cared for me like his own. Yes, why is that? That was why I liked him. He was a good man. And, you know, Gilliman was almost family too. Catherine made a face at the mention of the man. But her eyes softened. I miss my I miss my father. Me too. There was a pause. Captain shifted awkwardly in her skin. Can I tell you a secret? Of course. Killer Man and I We haven't had intercourse. Recently? No, I mean at all. Ho! Oh, Captain the version! Oh. Those are clear dress holes. <clears throat> I see. After all these years? Well, after the first time, never again. Rosa blushed. Her head nodded two images of two people she considered her friends. Rosa tried to push him away, but all she was able to do was paint the worst fantasies and gross salmon and bugs. She cleared her throat. Is that why he has separate rooms even though we moved here in the chateau? Oh, so she's not a virgin. No. That was his idea. He was very peculiar with his sleep. I imagine we keep keeping in separate bedrooms even when we got married. I don't mind, really. Well, you're waiting soon, isn't it? Perhaps you're just nervous. No, I don't think it's like that. Recently we've been, we get intimate, but I always thought when things get too sultry. Oh. He gets upset sometimes, upset sometimes, but he says it's alright. Captain looked at him ruefully in her toes. He doesn't push me into it. I should be glad. But don't you think it's strange? What if I stay like this even after we're married? I don't understand why. Sometimes I get these doubts, but I wonder why they are there. Isn't that unfair for him? Hmm. I just feel like there's something wrong with me. If there is nothing wrong with you, but it makes you really insecure. This lack of, you know, what if he's getting it somewhere else? It drives me crazy. And I believe, and believe me, I want to. I just can't for some reason. I get this horrible feeling I can't explain. Rosie said, "My cat's face and came to a conclusion." It took me a while to understand sex. The sudden no nonsense, no nonsense comment surprised Catherine. Rosa went on. I I was the same as you. I've always had an adverse feeling for it. This like it's dirty and I should be ashamed for enjoying it. I always that I've always thought love would make sex clean. But that's not how it works. They are two separate things. Is she talking about her past? Mm. So, just because you don't like sex, it doesn't mean you don't love him, Cat. Cat I looked up at her. Why do you even care so much to hurt him? What do you think love is? The warm feeling returned to Catherine's heart. How did you do that? Huh? You always know the right thing to say. Always. Rosa blushed at this, suddenly aware that they were still in a loose tangle of an embrace. I've read a lot of books lately. More books lately. Um, I think this is just me, but I think Catherine and Rosa are getting a little more closer than I thought. She tried to defuse the situation with a laugh, but Catherine didn't drop her look. Kind of like played prettily shit just on her skin. It illuminated the glint in her eyes, the moist on her lips. Um, Rosa felt the warmth of the alcohol rise up to her face. The heartbeat increased steadily. Okay, I think they're. Uh, uh, anyway, maybe you'll feel better about it when you're married. You're probably just nervous about the whole thing. 
She may attempt to curl away from Captain's arms. Slowly, subtly running away. <laughs> Dispersed the proximity, but she couldn't run away from her stare. Captain's hands caressed rolls of spit. Okay, okay. Um. Ah. Uh, she touched her scar against it, tracing them with her fingers. You're really pretty, Rosa. Especially when you smile. Uh, thank you, I think. You don't believe me. Uh, I. I don't think I am. Like. I look in the mirror and I see a freak. Okay, good. We stopped. Rosa, it's not true. It is fine. I, I liked being a freak. I wanted to be ugly. I used to buy my breasts and hide in shabbiest clothes I could find. Rosa touched her eye. This was penance, she remembered herself saying, for being a sinner and a freak, for attracting the attention and spite, for dressing nicely, for letting her hair grow long. Really, I did it to myself to hide. To hide? Rosa's mouth quivered. You know, I'm actually way over my limit of what to play with this, but I'm really getting interested in this entire story in between them. I want to see what happens. I thought people don't touch ugly things, but the truth is, they do. So, what I'd rather be is invisible. Catherine wrapped her arms around Rosa's neck. She heard Catherine snip and whip white tears behind her embrace. She pushed Rosa's hair away and kissed her defective eye. You're not a freak, and you're not ugly. I love every part of you. They're all beautiful. Rosa forgot how close they were now, forgetting to get Catherine's hands on her own. She was somebody who accepted her with all her faults and ugliness. You, you always make you feel like I ain't worth something. Because you are. You are beautiful, Rosa. Inside and out. Rosa saw her face reflected in Catherine's eyes. And then she did indeed look beautiful. A lump formed in Rosa's throat. Catherine's face hovered above her cheek. She felt a little seed of a kiss on it, just barely away from her lips. Rosa kissed her nose in return. It made Catherine giggle. At first, the kisses were sweet, innocent, the kind of punch drunk kisses that sent them both into bouts of giggling. But Catherine's hand caressed her neck. Their kisses lingered, lips melted, hands explored, and Rosa sucked in Catherine's tongue inside her mouth. Wine, candle wax, spit. This was what it tasted like. Rosa's hand began to swoon. Catherine's hand squeezed her right breast. Oh. Trap. Grapes. Plush. Rosa began to taste more of her. Longing. Regrets. Tears. A sensational flavor she had never tasted before hugging her at the edge of her tongue. She thought that she was hungry for it. Take it all. Rosa savored the taste. She breathed deeply. Oh, my. Child! Her heart. I want her heart. Her love is sweet. Listen to my voice. Mother? Yay! Mother! Oh boy. Mother's back. Oh boy. But but I'm so hungry. So hungry. Stop! Rosa flung her eyes open. A sinky feeling of menace overcame her. No! Rosa pulled away. She pushed Captain away from her face. Captain's eyes stepped open and started by Rosa's outburst. Okay, I think I think we can end here. I, yeah, I think we can end here. Okay, all right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Oh my God. Wow. Just wow. Wow. That. <laughs> I kind of wanted that moment to happen. You know, the only Yuri moment, and I got my wish. I got a Yuri moment. So. Yay for me! Hooray! Yuri moment! <laughs> uh, I played well over an hour of this, and... Oh, God. I don't want to stop, but I have to. I have to stop right here. Next time, we will pick this up 
and I will get more into the story. Oh, oh my god. I'm so glad I got this. I'm so glad I got this game right now. Oh, man. <sighs> well, plenty more of that came from later. So, thank you guys so much for watching. And if you like this video, please share it with your friends so they may all enjoy it together. And so, until next video, see you next time.